All right, so it's my first time building one of these 911 engines and um, certainly you've heard about all the challenges with doing the cam timing. So I wanna make sure that I'm doing a good job here. Um, so I went out and bought several specialty tools just to make sure A, I make it as easy as possible on myself, but B, that, um, that I have the level of precision that I'm looking for here, here with my uh, high lift, high duration cam. So starting with, I actually used uh, a digital degree meter here um, to, uh, to help with the timing process um, instead of just kind of struggling with um, you know, the notches on the, the, uh, the pulley wheel. Uh, and then um, you know, here's the, uh, the, the monitor or the gauge that comes out of the, that digital dial back um, off the back of the motor. Okay, coming around to this side of the motor. Again, I wanna share some, some other tools I invested in. I ended up going with Stomsky Racing mechanical uh, chain tensioners uh, to put a nice, tight, snug on um, you know, the chain tension as I'm going through the, um, the timing sequence. Okay, and coming, ar coming around to this side of the motor, um, starting with intake number one. Um, you know, this is your standard P207 uh, Z-Block tool. Um, and a standard digital um, dial caliper. So anyway, that's all set up. Um, you know, I've already set the, uh, the, the valve lash using the um, standard uh, Porsche feeler. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah, this here, you guys have all seen this, you're familiar with it. Really, this is the only way to get into an area, you know, that's, that's this tight, you know, when you've got the rocker installed. This is really the only way to get in there and do a precise measurement so anyway um you know so this is intake number one obviously the the uh the rocker's installed i've set um the valve clearance okay so we're just about ready to start timing the left hand side here so we've got um everything set at top dead center so the z1 marking on the pulleys lined up with the crankcase half that's also um you know it's it's also indicating top dead center with the digital degree wheel, right? Zeroed out perfectly. So we're good there. Um, installed the P207 Z block as well as the digital dial indicator. I'm going to go ahead and, and zero this out. So we've got um, also, you know, our starting point is our camshaft. The dot is facing up, right? So we've got the dot facing up. We've got, um, I, I went ahead and put a marking here on the washer so that I can see that these later camshafts, you know, the, the, the markings on the camshaft itself are covered up by this washer. Whereas the earlier camshafts, you can always see those markings by the snout that comes out. So anyway, so this is our starting point. We're gonna rotate this 360 degrees. And when you, and we're gonna do that clockwise. When you rotate the motor or the crankshaft, one full rotation, the, uh, the camshaft rotates 180 degrees. So it's a half, you know, it rotates um, halfway around. We're exactly 360 degrees in, uh, in terms of a full rotation. You've got a 180 degree rotation here on the camshaft. Um, so now that dot that was facing up is now facing straight down and I'm getting a reading of minus 3.63. So we're shooting for 3.8 millimeters. Um, so a little bit more adjusting to do. Let's go ahead and turn the crank a bit more. Oops. Let's get ourselves to tough to do with all the tension on the chain you know you're talking about very small movements here it's perfectly set at minus 3.8 we're off about a degree from top dead center so we're going to go ahead and back this we take this uh, uh, bolt out we're going to find a new home for that uh, dowel pin when we reset ourselves back here to uh, top dead center okay so to loosen or tighten this later style um, bolt and washer um, um, camshaft sprocket you need the the Porsche factory tool and then just you know standard 19 millimeter nut here so this tool is great um, it does fit snug you can see it's kind of beveled out in here 
It, that beveling is to go around this washer. You don't want these fingers kind of rocking back and forth in here as you're trying to put close to 90 foot-pounds of torque on this thing. So it does fit in the holes nice and snug. Um, let's see if I can... There we go. So I've been using a rubber mallet just to get it, again, just nice and even. Make sure it's, it's flush with the washer. And then, you know, again, just a standard 19 millimeter socket. So we're going to go ahead and and uh, break this. Okay. All right. So we're going to remove the bolt and washer. Go ahead and use this screw to remove the dowel pin. Okay, got that out. Now, we need to get back the top dead center and keep the camshaft from moving. So I'm going to do rotation all the way around. If I move left, I've noticed I start to get movement here in the camshaft. So let's move all the way around. Okay, so we're back at top dead center. Um, right now we've got 3.79 millimeters on the cam, which is almost perfect. Um, I think that may be as close as we get here. So let's go ahead and see if we can find a new home for the dowel and see if we can tighten things up and keep it where it needs to be. Okay, got our factory tool in there to hold the sprocket. I'm still looking at 3.8. Got to torque this down to 88 foot pounds. Okay, so this is what the dowel pin looks like. This is the one that should be in the, the right side cam. I have the right side's not even tightened up and you know, the bolt's just inserted, you know, finger tight as I, as I focus here on the, the left side camshaft first. Anyway, so this dowel is inserted in these holes, right? So this is the, uh, um, the, the, the chain pulley here. Behind that um, is... Um, is another sprocket, right? And it's it's hard to see in here, but the way this is designed, so you've got this sprocket, this other small sprocket behind it, and this dowel pin is designed to fit in only one hole, like right? where basically those things are aligned, right? Because right now you can see the teeth of that other sprocket back there, and it would it's, it would prev it would prevent this dowel pin from going in most of these holes. Right, I've already got a dowel pin inserted in here. You needed to have that in to start the process. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and locate it once I take the bolt and washer off, but I just wanted to give you a sense of what we're trying to do here. This is what is allowing you to set, um, to, to give you range of adjustment here on this sprocket. So let me go ahead and um, 
loosen this bolt up and, and I'll show you more. So it looks like we're at uh, 3.78. Okay, came back, made a couple minor adjustments here again. Definitely takes time to get the feel for this. You know, you're trying to do everything as precisely as you can, you know, trying to keep everything from moving when you're, you know, torquing things back up. But anyway, so everything is zeroed out. We're gonna rotate this 360 degrees and we're gonna see where we get. Should be pretty close to the 3.78. I'm happy with that. It's good. 3.78. Okay, let's go to the, the right side. All right, so we've got the left-hand side timed. We're going to move over to the right-hand side. We're going to start with having, so I've already set valve clearance, mounted the P207, digital dial gauge. I've, I've got the dot for the camshaft pointing down. So we're gonna start there. Let's go ahead and zero out um, our dial gauge. And let's go 300, oops, let's turn on our digital degree wheel. Actually, we're not quite at 360 degrees. So let's make sure we get the top dead center first. Okay, yep, so zero it out, dots facing down. Let's go 360 degrees clockwise. And we're starting to come on cam. You can see we're getting a reading on the dial caliper. And we are right there we go. We're right at 360 degrees, back to top dead center. We're at 4.31, so we're well beyond the 3.8 that we're looking for. We need to loosen this up. Well, actually, take that back. Let's get ourselves back to the 3.8 that we're looking for. Okay, so we get back to the 3.8. Careful movements. Uh. Okay, 3.8. We're gonna loosen this up. dial pin okay dial pins out now rotate the crank back to 360 degrees and there we are perfect 360 degrees, we're sitting at 3.82 millimeters. So let's see if we can find a dowel pin hole. Um, let's 
see. Is it this one? Yeah. Okay, so we've got our dowel pin inserted, reinserted. Let's go ahead and put this on. Okay. That's nice and flush. And we're gonna go ahead and torque this down to 88 foot pounds of torque. All right, movement there. Get this back to top dead center and see what my measurements at. I had some movement with the cam there. It's really hard to keep things from moving as you're trying to torque it down. Actually, look at that, 3.8. Zeroed out, top dead center, exactly at 3.8. So I'm going to go ahead and do the final torque on this, and we should be set. Okay, so I just finished torquing down um, the, uh, the right side. So I got 88 foot-pounds of torque on that bolt. You can see right back at top dead center, you know, spot on, and about 3.79. So I'm really happy with this. Um, you know, it's, it's just, it's hard to keep things from moving much as you're, as you're putting torque on, on everything. Uh, again, the, um, the uh, specs for these cams were, was 3.8. Um, this is as close as I think I'm gonna get here. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with this. In fact, I'm gonna take the Z block off and just for the heck of it, I'm gonna re, um, you know, verify the uh, the left-hand side as well. i do that right now. Okay, because I guess I'm just paranoid. I want to make sure I got this right. I'm going back to the left-hand side. I got everything set up here. You can see on the right, we're zeroed out. We're top dead center. And um, uh, we're, we're zeroed out on the, on the digital dial gauge. So let's, let's crank this around. 360 degrees. Okay. <laughs> Stuff to get us right on top dead center. Let's see here if I can get a little bit more. <laughs> little movements. Sorry guys. There you go. Three point eight. Perfect.